Let's come on in the building. Let's get ready to worship the Most High. He is worthy of honor and glory. Amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet and give the Lord the praise he's worthy of. Amen.
proceed. Yeah. We prepare for your arrival. Please have your way. Have your way, please, heaven. Come on in. Come on in and bring revival. We're welcoming you. You are welcome. Take a seat. We prepare. We prepare for your arrival. Please have your way. Have your way, please, heaven. has to fade away when you show up chains have to break and when you show up darkness has to flee and when you show up nothing can stay the same Darkness, he has to flee. Say when you show when up, you show up. Say nothing can stay the same. When you show up, when you show up. Say every chain, every chain, every chain has to break. When you show up. Show up darkness and demons have to 
This room, fill the room, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill the room. Come on, let's just fill this place with work. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. 
We need, we need, we need Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, say. we need, 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 Holy Spirit, we need, 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 Holy Spirit, 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 Holy
Somebody just give God some praise. Oh 
We're not going to rush this moment in worship today. Our devotion, our devotion. 
pour out on the pour Come on, one last time, all together. Our hearts adore. Our hearts adore. And Jesus, we do love you. With everything we have in us, we love you. The very essence of who we are is a creation of love. And so before we continue in our time of baby blessing, let's take a moment to ponder on that song, Jesus, we love you. It's all of my admiration, my way that I'm designed to express love. My admiration, my appreciation, my, the very essence of who I am. It's my expression that I want to express to you, my devotion. Once more, sing it one more time for me, Matt. And I want you to comprehend that for a moment. When he says he loves us, I want you to go back to the cross and see what love is. Love is a cross that he hung on. A beating he took, a bruising of his body, a torture. And, and able to come off of a cross, he never did. He just hung there because of love to get us to a point today on earth to be able to express love to him because Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves me. Why don't you look over at someone and tell them, Jesus loves you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And can you look at them one more and tell them this? I love Jesus too. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Can, can we put our hands together and bless the Jesus that we love? Good. Can we celebrate him? Welcome to International Christian Center. Those who are watching outside this building, thank you for coming and being with us wherever you may be across our city, our state, our country, and our world. We thank you for being. Can we put our hands together for all of those who are watching outside of this building? Welcome to International Christian Center. 
where we are passionate about doing this one thing, helping you to become not ordinary, but an extraordinary, fully functioning follower of Christ. You know, that's what life is all about. In the next few minutes, you're going to see us do something that helps us help you become extraordinary, fully functioning followers of Christ. We start at a younger age, so we call it baby blessing. When we get a chance to take an ordinary young child and through the blessings that come through God's love for them to share purpose with them and take this ordinary child and remind the parents that they're really extraordinary in your care to help them become fully functioning followers of Christ. So that's what we'll be doing in the next few minutes as we prepare for our baby blessing. And welcome again to International Christian Center where transform people, transform people. All right, those who are participating in our baby blessing of Zaire Walker today, can you come please and stand before us? As the family and friends are coming to participate in our baby blessing here today, in Mark chapter 10, Jesus gives us the words that are needed for the purpose of a baby blessing. Baby blessings could be numerous of things. Baby blessings could be very noisy. Last time we did a baby blessing, this one right here wanted to be uh, the star of the show. In Mark chapter 10, verse number 13, it says, Then they brought little children to him, Jesus, that he might touch them. But the disciples, the Christians, the believers, the church at that moment rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Then he did what is the description of what you do with children when you bring them to church. Many churches and many institutions and many organizations do a lot of things to children today. That causes children, when they get older, to not even understand the sequence of what they need to do to come to Christ. Some sprinkle them, and all the sprinkle does is irritate babies. Some water baptize them, and the baby don't even know what water baptism is. The baby don't know how to swim yet. And they, they water baptize them without salvation. But here Jesus says, this is what you do with babies. He said he took them up in his arms. He took his hands and he laid it on them to bless them. Jalen, I want you to take your hands and look at them. Look at your hands. Your hands are not ever meant to destroy the purpose by how you use them. They're used to be, as Jesus used them, he put his hands on them as a blessing. To drive out rebellion, he used things like a wooden spoon for you, because you probably would have to drive it out of him. But when you use your open hands, you're telling him to be confused in the future about what does a man do with another man who puts his hands on you. He won't know whether we're blessing him or cursing him. So if you need to discipline him, use something to discipline, but don't use your open hands because he'll never remember, he'll never understand. When somebody comes to bless him, he'll think that they're trying to hurt him, and he'll run away from him. For those who are serving in our prophetic time, Teresa and Joe, one of two of our prophetic men and women of our church, I'm going to give you back to your dad till it's time for me to grab you. You got a little bit of weight on you. (laughs) 
Zaire, what the Lord gave me concerning you was legacy, river, and joy. We're going to be reading from Ezekiel 47 and 9. And it says, every living creature that swims wherever the river goes will, le will live. And wherever the river flows, life will flourish. Great schools of fish and people will come because the river has fresh water. Where the river flows, life abounds. And everything shall live wherever the river flows. So if we replace that with your name, it says, every living creature that hangs where Zaire is will live. Wherever Zaire lives, things flow. Life will flourish. There will be schools of people that will be around him because the Zaire has fresh water. Where Zaire flows, life will live and abound. And everything shall live because of the river where Zaire is. Psalms 46 and 4. There is a river of joy flowing through the city of our God. I saw Zaire giving instructions and teaching and training and coaching. He will be an amazing educator, says the Lord. He will bring a fresh way of learning to those people that have, written, have been written off and, sa and said that they cannot learn. He is a happy teacher. He is the coach that gets the athletes to do what must be done without having to yell, but through motivation and encouragement. I heard the Lord say that Zaire is the legacy. He is the one that will build off what has been handed down, and it will flow through him abundantly. I think it not strange, um, Jalen, that the Lord had you do your baby blessing on Father's Day. And what the Lord was saying to you, that he is your Abba Father. And he says, the questions and the pain of the Father that you thought that wasn't there, should have been there, and all that, is ceased today. He says, on today, it is your Father's Day. It is not only a Father's Day for you, but it's for your son. It is for the future that you will instill in him. He says, this is the day that you will choose to pour your past into him or your present and his future. He says, upon him... There is, like Pastor was saying, there is a rock inside of him, and he is solid. And he is able to build off everything that you pour into him. So you will be the one who will choose what this legacy that he will build off. If it is life, he will build. If it is death, he will build. But trust and believe that God has purpose and a plan for him, and that is good and not evil. He says, there have been many days and many nights that you have struggled with anger and pain. And God says that today I'm removing the pain from your past and from those wounds. He says, I'm pouring in a sap of healing and restoration. And he says, I'm going to restore all that that the canker worm has lost, that has been lost and stolen. And he says, even for Zaire, I have poured in a sweet smelling savor of joy and laughter and peace. And every time that you embrace him and every time that you bring him to your chest, you're feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is healing you and he's restoring you and he's letting you know that you are loved and you are accepted and that you are not rejected. And he says that even the joy that he has and even right now as he's smiling, he said there is life that flows through him. And that as people interact with him, there is healing and there is joy that comes through him. And he says don't. Uh, don't think it's strange that, that, that these people, these multitude of people that are coming around him, that are trying to uh, get around him, think it not strange. It's because they're empty and they're coming to that well. They're coming to that river to be filled up, to be poured into. And he says, don't protect it to the extent that you're, uh, um, you're uh, stifling what his purpose is. Hallelujah. Psalm 36, verses 7 through 9, tell us, How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wing. Zion will be abundantly satisfied with the fullness of God's house. Zaire shall drink 
from the rivers of God's pleasure. For with God he is a fountain of life. And in his light we see light. And then Psalm 65 verses 9 through 10, it says, God will visit the earth and water it. He will greatly enrich Zaire. The river of God is full of water. He provides grain. Zaire is grain. For you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furrows. You made it soft with showers. You will bless its growth. Fatherhood. There's nothing wrong with having a little hood in my father. Because when they're yours, you know what you will do to any that seek to harm them. Rivers are intriguing. It's interesting that we really didn't hear some things that we've heard of our other children, such as they'll be doctors or they'll be lawyers. We didn't hear that because rivers kind of get their own way. All we do is kind of make sure that they don't run over the banks. We give them boundaries. Godly boundaries that from where they come from, the source of their power can sort of push them along. I'm not upset about where you came from. Because with rivers, it's all about where are you going? And the Bible said that he is grain. He's a provider. He operates from the way maker. That he helps ensure that other people have their needs met. So we don't want to kind of stop him from where he's supposed to go. We just give him boundaries. You can't go here. You can't go there. But you can make your own way because he's powered by the source. Prophesy. Well, man, I hear it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Voice. Daryl, no, turn this way. This way, I got you. There you go. All right. Come here, Daryl. Put your hands on his back. Okay. DA, put your hands on his back. We're missing one. This one right here. He's out of town? Okay. Good. Rice man, come here for a minute. Robert, come here. You're fine. Put your hands right here. Step back. I got you. You're fine. Right? Put your hand right here. Put your hands right here. This one right here is out, out of state. This is Daryl's other son. This is Dewey. This is Daryl. This is Dewey. This is Daryl Jr. This is D'Angelo. And now, before D'Angelo, let's see. No, step back. You go back in there. This, this order is really bad. There it is. There we go. Yeah, that, yeah, that's better. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we have Daryl. We have Dewey. We have Jalen. We have Daryl Jr. We have D'Angelo. And then bring him right here. Put him on the back of Put him right here. All right. All right. Good. All right. Don't be afraid of this. Because you are. You think that you will mess it up. But you won't. The only thing would mess it up if you never turn around and look back. 
if you don't turn around and look at them and remind them of who you are, that you are great, that you came through great mess, but the mess didn't make you, and you're not messed up, and you're not messing them up. There are decisions they make because you won't turn around and look them out of the eye and say, you're not a mess. You messed up, but you're not a mess. And remember, son, you messed up many times in life. But once you found the master, you've never been a mess ever again. So I want you not to feel the pressure and the weight of all of them. I want you to trust that the Lord got them. And you don't have to prove that no longer. You are a man of God. And you do have a legacy. Stay still. You got to trust Dewey again. Can't fight with him no more. There's something in him that your son's going to need. He won't get it if he don't think he's valuable to you. Too many generations were going to get back to your son. He won't give it to him if you won't accept him. Accept him again as your brother. Call him your big brother again. You are my big brother. I love you. I need you. And then let him turn around and look you in your eye. And even when you don't want him to look you in the eye and tell you what you need to hear, respect it because he earned it. He's your big brother. And you have to respect him again. And stop running from him. And allow him to turn around and look you in your eye and tell you when you're not doing right. To remind you that you're more than what you do. You're greater than what you do. But someone has to remind you. The back person can't remind you. The front person will always remind you, even when you don't want to hear it. You have to let him turn around and say, I'm your big brother. And he reminds you that you come from great stock. You have legacy in your blood. And then you have to stop thinking that he can't tell you nothing. Because you know his story. You know his life. And you try to imitate things that you should imitate just to fit in. Do you understand who you are? A bridge to the next generation. A baby who's watching you. A baby whose arms on the back of your shoulders. Saying that if you can't do it, how in the world do you think I can? But you have to allow your brother to turn around and tell you, I've been some places you can't go. I've done some things you shouldn't do. And you can't say, well, look, you're not my, no, tell him you are my big brother and I need your experience. Tell me the truth, even if it's painful. And then you'll hear this baby cry to remind you that I'm watching you. Can I trust you? Can I watch you? Can I watch you play football and score? Can I watch you get up and push yourself? Can I watch you who's got one of the greatest minds and you accept compromise instead of being the head of the class? Can he trust you to live a life that he can follow? Can you turn around to him and say, I'm your big uncle? Trust me. And for you, I bless you today with a legacy. I bless you with an uncle that you can trust, with uncles, with a dad, with uncles, with a granddad that you can trust with your life. You'll look for models. They're right in front of you. You don't have to look no further. You don't have to look to the streets. 
You don't have to look to gangs. You don't have to look nowhere else. They're in the house. They're right in front of you, son. Don't you ever look outside the house again. Father, I bless him with strength, with integrity, with character, with confidence, with longevity and creativity. I bless you, son, with the ability to change the world. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Live strong, live bold, live courageously. And don't be afraid, don't be afraid to look in the house again. They're all in the house, all the uncles and the dad and the granddad and all the cousins and nephews and nieces and all those people in that big family of yours. But remember, all the men you need is in the house. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet everyone. Uh, starting on this side, we have Cousin Jasmine. We have Cousin Wells. Uh, Mabel. We have Cousin, we have cousin Riley, Ryan. We have Aunt Titi. We have Meemaw. Meemaw. We got Dom. <laughs> cousin Dom. This is Mom, Deja. This is Uncle Daryl. This is Uncle D.A. This is Grandpa. This is Cousin Janae. This is Aunt Michelle. This is Big Sissy Yuli. This is Big Sister Isla. And last but not least, we got my mom. And then, of course, Dad. Amen. Hallelujah. It is my honor to say good morning, International Christian Center. That wasn't that good. Um, good morning, International Christian morning. Center. Hallelujah. And it is my real honor to say happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. There's nothing like being a dad. In Jesus' name. But I've come to find that the best job is being granddad. Yes. You ain't got to spank much rear end when you're granddad. You just get to hand out blessings in Jesus' name. <laughs> Spanking stuff's for you, son. I get to just bless. Him. God is good. My name is Joe Armstrong. It is my opportunity and pleasure to lead us this morning as we transition from the incredible baby blessing of Zaire Walker. Let us now go into our time of giving in the house of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As you see in our, in our in house family, if you would like to participate, please raise your hand and our wonderful ushers will assist you. Our online family, if you don't mind, uh, you, your screen is showing you the platforms and availability we have for you to participate in our giving as well. I look back on my dad who is with God. And you begin to analyze the understanding of giving. See, I, my dad was not an absentee father. He was there every day. I seen what my dad did. My dad would 
do whatever was necessary to make sure that his children had. He'd work overtime and overtime again to make sure. I never wanted for a baseball glove, cleats, books, clothes, because dads know I will lay down my life for those that came from me. In fact, the real sign of fatherhood is giving. It's how I give. And I give completely of myself for those that I'm responsible for. It is in this vein that we come to an understanding of giving. Giving may be challenging, but it is not something that I say no to. It may press me, but it's not like it's going to back me down. And one good thing about it, fathers give, and we 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 give. One more give. <laughs> and we give. <laughs> And we give. But let us get to the real. We don't necessarily give because of what you've done with the giving. We give because it is our heart to give. And you matter to us, our children and grandchildren. I believe our father said the same thing when he gave us Jesus. I believe Jesus said the same thing when he hung on that cross. If nobody else accepts my giving but Joe Armstrong Jr., that's good enough for me. I'll go through what I got to go through to make sure that they got away. Because that's what we do, dads. We make sure ours got away. Amen? I didn't hear enough bass in that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, if all the fathers and the not yet fathers and the mothers and the not yet mothers are ready to participate in our giving, would you please raise your offering in the air? And you online, if you could, you could you raise your apparatus. You can hold on to your computer. You can... Uh, sit in your uh, bedroom and do what you do. We call this your day, Heavenly Father. Every day is your day. But we exalt you and glorify you on this day. It is a blessing that we have an opportunity to bring our tithe and our offering into your house. Would you do with it as fathers do? Would you make a way for all those that have need. Would you bless them overly and abundantly what anything they could hope or ask or think? Father, they are just like you. Would you bless them above anything that they could set their mind to? And can they see you glorified and exalted? In the name of Jesus, we are in agreement and we say, Amen. Amen. We have a lovely uh, uh, time that we have. Uh, I've seen one of our wild world uh, leaders today. They are on fire. Um, it ought to be, wild world may be for about two, three days. It seems like she done brought all kinds of stuff in Jesus' name. So we will release our young ones to wild world as well. And then the voice that you will hear after our announcements over the... Uh, uh, over our internet and over our broadcast will be the voice of our returning from vacation pastor. So if you don't mind, please grab on to something because we about to go somewhere. Please enjoy our announcements, Lord, in Jesus' name. Witnesses of the word. Wild peas, wild peas, wild peas. It's that time. Witnesses of the word. Wild peas, let's go. Only at ICC. 
Good morning, ICC. My name is Dewey. And my name is Alyssa. And I'm Aries. Let's see what's happening in the life of our church. If this is your first time with us, we would love to connect with you. Go ahead and head back to Members Connect at the back of the auditorium. Or if you're watching us online, head to our website and fill out the form so that we can connect with you. Join us Mondays from 7 to 8 p.m. for our prayer call. We know where two or three are gathered that God promises to be in the midst. So join us as we activate the power of corporate prayer, Mondays at 7. Hey ladies, join the Fully Persuaded Women's Ministry on Friday, October 21st through Sunday, October 23rd this year. You got this women's advance at the Berlin Grand Hotel in Walnut Creek, Ohio. We want you to register right now online at intl-cc.org. A $25 non-refundable, non-transferable deposit is due August 7th. So in order for you to reserve a room, we're looking for you to make those payments. You can do that online. You can do that at Members Connect and on the kiosk. If you want to find out more about who we are, what we believe, or becoming a member, you want to get signed up for Next Steps. And you can do that by visiting Members Connect in the back of the auditorium or visiting us online. Hey y'all, it's that time of the year, Summer Performing Arts Camp. Mark your calendars June 20th to June 24th. This is happening 6.30 to 8 p.m a place for every child to perform. This is totally free. Summer camp is open to kids ages six to 12. All kinds of classes and activities from hip hop dance, gymnastics, mime, jazz, even ninjutsu. Make sure you sign up online today. Register for two classes per child. Hey everyone, it's about to be the best summer ever. We have two outdoor services happening right here in the parking lot. First one is Sunday, June 26th, and then join us again outside July 31st. Both of these will be our 10 a.m. service happening outside in the parking lot. Come on out, bring the friends, bring family, and bring a chair to sit outside. Our service will have some amazing, fun things after each one. We got food trucks lined up, bounce houses for the kids, all kinds of fun and surprises. I'll see you there. Don't forget about our special Splish Splash Water Bash. It's going down July 27th at 7 p.m. Meet us outside in the parking lot. We're talking water balloons, water guns, face painting, all kinds of fun stuff for the kids and the family. So I'll see you there as well. Best summer ever right here at ICC. Fully Persuaded Women's Ministry is going to La Media Dinner Theater to see Disney's Beauty and the Beast on Saturday, July 23rd, 2022. You need to arrive at the church at 3 p.m. The tickets are only $70. A $35 non-refundable deposit will secure your spot. The balance must be paid in full by June 21st, 2022. Payments are accepted on our website, the kiosk, or Members Connect. It includes transportation, a Broadway production, and a dining experience featuring signature salad crowned with papaya chutney dressing, chef carved meats, a variety of pastas, fresh vegetables, and their famous sweet potato souffle. Need I say more? Don't be left out. There's only 54 spots available. It's an experience you will always remember. Don't forget to invite a friend. For more information, you can check us out online or at Members Connect in the back of the auditorium. And now let's continue with the service. Can I get three volunteers? With, I think Mr. D. Trey, that's my, 
Show me a tray. Yes, absolutely. Here's one. Oh, I think it should be a father-son battle. Come on, Joe. Come on. Trey, why don't you do? D, you raise your hand. Come on, D. That's that's my other brother. Come on, D. Joe, you got to compete. You mean the elder of the church is saying no? Oh, Pastor, I need a new church. I need a new church. The elder just made me mad. You scared of your son, Joe? Who is it? Oh, Brent. You come, come on back, Brent. Huh? I said, Brent. Come on, Brent. We're gonna talk, up. Pastor. I need you to have a meeting with Joe later. You don't be putting family business out all on the internet, Joe. You're supposed to just do it, but that's okay. These guys are the best. Hi, guys. Thank you for participating. So today we have a Father's Day game, and it's Father's Day trivia. So we're gonna ask you ten questions. These buzzers, all work. So there. So whoever buzzes in first gets the point. Of course, you know, it's, it's the era of participation. Everybody will get a prize, but one will get one better than everybody else. Oh, okay. so, so we do get prize? You do get a prize. Okay, what kind of prize? I can tell you that. You just oh, got okay. to play now. Okay. You up here. All right. So y'all ready? ready? I need y'all to cheer them on. Yeah. Encourage them. Let's go. Guys, you got to stick together. Help your boys out. All right. Question's going to be on the screen, but I'm going to also read it, okay? Ready? All right. Let's roll that first question. Is Father's Day celebrated the first, second, or third Sunday? Do not help them. Oh, uh, who buzzed first? Dwayne buzzed first. Sorry. I would have given it to you, Trey, but I just can't. Oh, okay. I feel you. Oh, it's on now. Uh-oh. Go ahead, D. And y'all stop helping them. I said cheer them, not give them the answers. Yeah, no, no. Don't do that. Help. I'm not that kind of help. Go ahead. Third, the answer is the third. Woo! Y'all get one day of the year. You should know what it is, right? All right. Ready for the next question? What is the most gifted Father's Day present? I seen Trey. Good. Come on. Oh, sorry. No favoritism. Sorry. But good job, Trey. <laughs> Answer is, oh, oops, sorry. Answer is necktie. See? Good job. How many did you give your dad? <laughs> you didn't buy him? Because he got a closet. He got it like 5,000 of them. It's crazy. But anyway, good job. <laughs> All right. The next question is. Dad originated from what common sound made by babies? Brent, I, you broke the table, but oh, okay, don't, don't be tearing up. This no, is good no, furniture. My bad. Don't be tearing up. What, what's the answer, sir? Dad, dad. Good job, high five. And the answer is dad. All right. Number four. In Genesis 22, was. I mean, he can't read that. Wait a minute. You know, I got muscle. Don't be getting, I got back up. He didn't give the answer, he just hit it. Yeah. Well, Trey read it. Oh, my God. <laughs> plan to sacrifice his son to provide. Okay. You did, yeah, okay, we'll give the next one, but Trey, answer the question. Right, no. It's the answer is Abraham. Yes, that's what that. Let me finish reading the question. Trey, let's not practice your speed reading. You hear me? No practice speed reading. Say that. <laughs> I got it. Just don't break the table. Okay. What is the official father for, excuse me, what is the official flower for Father's Day? Brent. Anybody else? Because that was wrong. Speedy. Go ahead, Trey. No. But go ahead, D. 
because somebody gave him the answer already. <laughs> but yes, D got that one. The answer is Rose. Woo. Okay. Stevie Wonder wrote a song for his newborn daughter. What is the title of the song? Ooh, come on, Pastor. Go ahead, D. Ooh, no, you're not special. No. Go ahead, Brent. Ooh, Jesus, Pastor Ty, wait a minute. Don't, don't show the answer to this one yet. Come on, Trey. No, Pastor Ty, do you know the answer? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Lovely, yes. Uh, no points for that. She ain't special. She's just lovely. <laughs> but he wrote us a daddy wrote a song. <laughs> no. <laughs> that must be his song. Okay. Father's Day is one of the top ten card giving holidays. From the first to the tenth. Where do you think Father's Day falls? Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Brent? Okay. You was going to say that too? <laughs> you going to say seven? D, what you got? Number three? Sorry, guys, you are wrong. It's number five. It's the fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, we're not splitting points. No splitting points. As of 2019, what is the percentage of American dads are stay-at-home dads? <laughs> All right, wait, I'm sorry. Ready, set, go. D. 27%. Nice try. Anybody else? Ooh, 50, nice try. <laughs> Absolutely. 7%. What's the average age of the first time fathers in America? Mm. Yes. Ooh, that sounds about right, but no, it's not. D? Ooh, nope. <clears throat> nope. All right, no, but from where we from, uh -huh. <laughs> it's actually 30. All right, yeah, I don't know them guys, but okay, I don't know none of them. Um, so there's going to be a tool on the screen. What is this tool? Uh, ooh, <laughs> I don't know. It's that was a tie between Brent and, but Brent, you do know what that is, right? Okay. All right. Shay. Both of them get it? Okay, both of y'all get it. Good. Good job. All right. Now, so do we need a tiebreaker? Because I sure don't feel like we do. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Who was our winner, Shay? Woo! Go, Trey. <laughs> Is that tr that's right, Taya. What we get? That's absolutely right. No, they get their own tray. You ain't got the chair. You ain't got the chair. Here come their gifts, and then there's Trey. Happy Father. <laughs> Thank you guys for everything. Have a have a happy Father's Day. All right. All right. Take your seat. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Oh, I have such welcome. a wonderful time. Oh, oh. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. I know, right? What's your name, buddy? Joseph Armstrong IV. And I'm Joseph Lewis Armstrong III. And of course, that would lead me to be Joseph Lewis Armstrong Jr. If I don't think about fatherhood, I think about responsibility. That's, you know, you take, you take ownership over those who come from you. I'd agree with that. I'd pretty much say the same thing, actually, yep. 
What do you think about when you hear the word lineage? The intriguing, when I think about lineage, I would think about what I learned from my dad. Yep. Um, and what was important and what was not important. And then I was able to differentiate and then it would only be, it would not be great if it only stopped from him to me. But it has to be great because it goes from me to my son Trey. And then of course, from Trey to Q. And that's what makes it great. So Trey, what, what changed between you and your dad when you became a father? Oh, I understood it. <laughs> I could understand where he was coming from on a lot of older conversations. <laughs> I kind of, you know, it clicked, it clicked. I get you. And I became more appreciative for what he has done for me and is still doing for me. Much more appreciative. And I try to do what I can to pass that on, you know, do the same thing. Q, you know, what's your always. favorite memory of your dad? <laughs> what do you love to do with Poppy? It's because it <laughs> So you like when you take it? <laughs> no, I'm talking about like this thing right there and it hurts. Okay, so he's, he's not really big on me hugging me. <laughs> Even though because, he loves it. Yeah, because I, I have to see if I can get my beard into his neck at any one time. <laughs> but I think one of the things but that it you hurts. Do, I mean, one of the things I think you love with Poppy is you love to go to the store and say, Target. Yes, tar <laughs> Target. Target. And say, Poppy, can I? And before you finish the sentence, your grandmother has printed it out for you. <laughs> it's already in the car. And it's already in the car. It's already in the car. She didn't check if it's got a coupon. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so okay, so you asked me about what did I think about when my son had a son. Right. And my my thinking was it, it it challenged me to somewhat because I would replay everything and wonder if I had put enough into him so that he could pour into his son. So, you know, sometimes he would it would lead to a place maybe of apprehension. Maybe not fear, but apprehension. But one of the best things is because they're around, I can still directly pour into my grandson. So, what do I want them to say about me when I'm gone? Well, for sure, Daddy was there, and he did all he could do, and I'm grateful for him. That's what I'm gonna say. Hmm. What would you like your children to say about you? When I would like them to wail uncontrollably. <laughs> I will definitely to wail yeah. uncontrollably. But then what I would love for them to, to say is, I got this. I can stand on these two legs. And I can get done what I'm supposed to get done. Because I got this. Leave a message for the little ones. My message, if I would think for Joseph the fourth and for now Tyson, his brother, is God's got you. And I know this because he had me. And he had your dad. And because he's the same yesterday and today. The same to me, the same tomorrow. So, see you when you get here. Solid.
inside this building and those who are inside this building, and welcome to the echoing place. Yeah. What, uh, you know, when I see things like that, through that video, I don't even want to teach no more because it taught for us. You know, it, it already taught. It taught the lesson of what, what, the, what, is, what is a father? A father and then a son and then a grandson and the legacy and the pouring and the downpouring from Joe to Trey and then from Trey to his son. And his son always come and tell me, you always forget my name. I just did it again. Q, Q always say, Pastor, how do you forget my name? All the time, you're so smart. You're supposed to remember those things. That's what, that's what grandchildren do. Well, welcome to International Christian Center. We're excited about this Father's Day. And can we put our hands together for all the fathers in the building and outside the building today? Yeah, good. Well, I'm honored to uh, be out of this, out the building for three weeks and see and, and, and hear some good. Man, on the beach, I was listening to Matt for two weeks, and then I got a camp home. And Joe, uh, man, I was so blessed last week. Came, went back home and took all my notes and went back over them. And today I'm home and I feel excited about being in the house of God, but being with you. I got some thoughts in my mind and I got these thoughts in. That, that, whole, that whole kickoff of Thirsty that Joe and Matt, and then I just like the rhythm of it. I, can, can we play it? Can, you, can we start it again? Uh, can you, can you just give me the beginning, the, the clip, like, from the beginning? This thirsty thing, you know, like Matt did. Yeah, can you just give me that again? I just like the music of it. Yeah, I just like that. Before I even get started, you know, you follow us out there. Some of you home, and you just kind of sit like this. Just want you to get up and shake a little bit. And some of you men right here, don't, you know, don't, don't just be bored today. When life is such an adventure, how about just uh, move a little bit, uh, you know, just, I just, when, when, Michelle, when I heard the music, I just wanted to get up and do something. It's like, it was like a clip. Oh, yeah, it was something, you know, the, the beginning of it. But uh, if we can't find, don't worry about it. I just make my own song. <laughs> Right here with me, man. Just help me out some way. Yeah, I, I just like that. It's just like that father thing. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah give, give me that music again. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, what does it feel like? Oh, oh yeah. I just feel like what they're doing it. Oh, I just feel like rock, rock like this and rock like that and rock that, but I that. I'm a father. I'm happy. I'm a father. I'm happy. It's my Father's Day. I'm happy. I'm happy. All right. Yeah. I, I, I wish we had a whole complete song. We won't have a service today. We just would dance. But because there's some people who say we should have service, and one of them is my wife, and she's home watching. I, I hear her right now. Would you please move on? I, I, I am. Yeah, so let, let's just move on. Well, we started a series called Thirsty is that, and we have these water bottles called Thirsty. And you can get a water bottle with Thirsty on it to remind you that the only thing that ever quenches your thirst is Jesus. Nothing else can quench your thirst like Jesus. But today, if you're a woman here or a woman out there, this is a focus moment for us to speak to men. But we're speaking to you who have sons, you who have nephews, you who have men in your life, you who have male that you, that you know, we want you to also grab something from it because there's something that you can learn from the day that can help you to help the men in your life maximize their ability because you're helping them and you know the areas that you need the help in. A pastor who, who called me this morning at, and, and they and she was talking to me from Atlanta. She said to me, how can you get males out of boyhood into manhood? So this morning, we had that conversation, probably about 7.30. How do you get, she's a female, she's asked a question. How do you get males out of boyhood into manhood? And I told her, 
listen to the message today. Because we're not going to get boys out of boyhood. We're going to do what a great sculptor said. When you look at the angel that the sculptor made, and they asked, how do you get the angel? And he said, if you can chip away at the clay, the angel is always in there. See, the man is always inside of the boy. We just need to chip away the excess stuff that's allowing you to see the boy but never see the man because the man is always there. We just have to chip away at it enough to get the man to come out. But if you crack it, the man won't come out. But if you chip it, the man will come out. Today, we'll chip away at some of the debris that keeps us from being who we're called to be. Today, we're going to look at every man here is born for an adventure. All right? Every man is born for adventure. Now, whether we take the adventure or not, but we're born for one. So let's get right into the day that all of us here as males were born for adventure. And all the men you have in your life are born for adventure. And every nephew that you have, every brother you have, every male is born for adventure. If the man doesn't find the God-given adventure, he lives an apathetic life. He lives for an appetite and not for an adventure. And now he's trying to figure out, how do I fix my appetite? Because his appetite is really the God-given adventure that he's not on. And so now he's trying to fix it with all these other appetites, and these appetites won't fulfill him because he's really looking for the God-given adventure that he was born for. So inside of every single male in this room is a thirst for, these are thirsts that every male has, a thirst for, number one, success. I was at Lifetime Fitness Center, ready to work out, and Brent was over there, and he was, he was working at uh, his marketing uh, group that he was with, and he saw me. I just kind of walked in at 6 o'clock and saw him over there. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, what's up Pastor? And, and he, was, he had this success look like. He was selling the product to God, and another guy was selling it. He, you know, he was looking all successful. I was like, no, go ahead, man, success. But he was at Lifetime because he was working another job, and his thirst for success. And every inside of all of us as a male is a thirst for success. A thirst for significance. Significance is a little different than success. Success is you do it long enough, you can be successful at it. Matt plays the keyboard long enough that he can be successful at it. Significance is totally different because significance is that you found what you were designed for and you pursue it with whatever you have and you're significant because you achieved it. So significant is not ability, it's not talent, it is purpose driven that drives you to reach it. And all of us as a male, we have that thing that I want to be significant. Then this last thing is the hardest thing for us, but it's the thing that we fall short in the most in society, that every male wants a sense of belonging. I want to belong. That's why we join gangs. That's why we have fraternities. That's why, because we want to belong. We want the significance of, I want to belong. And, and when males come to church, they want to belong in church instead of go to church. And when we just go to church, that's why we leave church, and that's why there's less men in church than there is women, because we want to belong, but you don't make us belong. You just make us serve. You tell us to usher. You tell us to run the sound, play the keyboards, but you don't give us nothing to belong to. You give us something to serve. So we go out and find something to belong to. We find motorcycle gangs. We find hobbies because I need to belong. And church has lost its ability to have men to belong because men don't belong no more. Men just come to church. You don't belong to church, you come to church. So you lose the adventure for church. So throughout, some, throughout time, some men quench that thirst while other continue dried up. And we have more men who are dried up and they're in a drought scenario. Now, something about, when we talk about thirst, we have to talk about water. So we're talking about thirst, and then we gotta talk about the biological anatomy part of who we are. So if we look at our, we look at our, if we can take us apart right now, we say that I'm 75% water, 25% mass. This is what we made up, 75% water, 25% mass. The brain is 85% water. 
85. Now, we say in medical terms, if someone has a dry mouth, they are dehydrated. Well, that's true, but that's not totally true. Because you have already dehydrated. By the time you have a dry mouth, you've already one month dehydrated. So you are one month dehydration before you get the symptom of a dry mouth. By the time you have a dry mouth, your body's going to shut down. Because your body's been pulling water from you from places that your body needed. So there's organs that needed water, but over a month, you didn't know you had dehydration problems because you weren't consuming water, so you were dehydrated. And by the time you went to the hospital and you are now about ready to leave the planet because you dehydrate, you shut down kidneys and livers and, and all the things in your body because your body is saying, where's the water? So it's pulling water out of you. By the time you get a dry mouth, that means that you've already been dehydrated. Well, that's the same way with a man when it comes to his spiritual life. By the time you backslid, you've already backslided. By the time you say, I'm, you're already there. Why? Because if you stay in a spiritually dry place too long, you've already are in a dangerous spot because you've already are in a dehydrated moment in life. So when we talk about this, then I want you to parallel the practical. So when somebody tells you to drink a bottle of water, eight ounces times eight times your body weight, what they're trying to tell you is that if you don't have enough water in you with all the stress and strain, and when you drink, just say you're drinking some of you, how many of you are some tea drinkers? Good. How many of you some coffee drinkers? Don't, you can raise your hand, but don't raise them. How many of you some beer, some brew drinkers? Okay. Aha, yeah. I love my beer today. I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a big time man with a big belly, beer belly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we are, Michelle. We got, we got these. We got, we got beer. We got alcohol. We have uh, tea. We have uh, coffee, and all of those drinks have water. They're water based, but they pull water out. Right. So, say you don't have enough water, so you drink coffee. So, but when you go to urine. That's why you have, if you took the capacity of urine, you have more urine than you have coffee that came out of you because it's pulling for water that's in you. So it's going, finding other places in you and pull the water out of you, and it's dehydrating other parts of your body because it's pulling out of you, because the caffeine is pulling out the water. So now you're, you're not wondering why you're kind of stiff. Like, well, what happened to that? You, you know, because it's pulling water from spots that needs the water. And, and what if that's your spiritual life? And, and you're at a dehydrated place, and, it's, and the world keeps pulling from you, and now you're stiffer. And you're in a dry place because you're supposed to be on a God adventure. Instead, you're pity patting around because you're in a dry moment in life. So we're, we're looking at this from this scenario because my responsibility today for all the men who are watching outside this building, fathers or males, I don't care if you're 12 years old or you're 100 years old, you need to understand that you were born for an adventure, and when you're not on a God-given adventure, you're headed to a dry place in life, and you won't even know it until you dry. And by the time we find out you're in a dry place, you have already dried up. So my responsibility is to make sure you don't get there and to identify when you have a dry mouth moment in life. Not just water, but life. When you find yourself dry, when your mouth, when your taste for church is gone. I come back from church and I have two uh, people, two friends of mine, two leaders from different parts of our country who called me and said to me, is that, hey, pastor, I'm in a dry moment. I'm leaving Jesus and leaving church. And my first question is, how did we get there? And then I read, I read my book that I was studying. Uh, you're not sick, you're just thirsty. You're not sick, you're just thirsty for more Christ. Somewhere you're not sick, but you're thirsty for the word that you're not taking of. You're not sick, but you're, you're thirsty for something that you haven't been taking lately. And as I read this over and over again to see that 
We're not sick men. We're just thirsty, and we're not quenching our thirst. What we're doing is we're drinking teas and coffees that's taking water from us. We're drinking from the world that's taking water from us. We're drinking from a well that's taking water from us, and we're dehydrated because we're not sick men. We're just thirsty, and we need to get hydrated again. Are you here with me today? So today we'll find one of the things that males can do to quench that thirst, which that, and that one thing is, let's find that God-given adventure again. Let's find that God-given adventure that, that can consume our life again and that can bring true success, that, that God-given adventure, Josh, that, that God thing, not, not, not the thing that someone told us to do, not the work that we do, not the job that we go to. Those are things that gives us nothing more than success, and success is our ability to maintain what we have for the people that we love, a house, a car, uh, 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 you know, take my granddaughter out yesterday to get her ice cream, go in my pocket, I got some money, take her get some ice cream, and, and, and yeah, I feel successful. But, but the, the adventure is more than taking her to get ice cream. That was an adventure, though. Yeah, major adventure. She get two, one scoop of blue, 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 cookie blue with a strawberry, and she tell me, you get one. How do I get one scoop? You get two. That's the adventure in itself. So, so for the next few minutes, let's do, let's do an investigation. An investigation of a true, the true makeup of man. Now, to go on this adventure, you're going to have to change hats. You're going to you're gonna have to change hats. Because the adventure you're on, you're so bored with coming to church looking like everybody else, but when you can look like and what you're designed to be, you can take the adventure because you wear more than one hat. The problem is that our society says women wear all the hats and men are supposed to have one. When you give man just a hat to wear, he get bored with it. Even though he say he likes steak, but he wants steak with something else on it. Don't just get that man. Well, I just like meat. Well, give him meat for the rest of his life and see what happens. He'll go somewhere else, somewhere else to find something else to put with the meat, and it won't be you. <laughs> ah, I got some not bees over here. So, so let's take an investigation. Let's, let's investigate this thing. You, you got some males. Number one, here we go. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Let's read. It says, then the who formed man? Then the Lord God did what? Formed the male man, the male who's a man, out of what? The dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into the nostrils. And then man became what? A living being. Then what did God do right when he created man? He said, the Lord God planted a garden and eaten it east, and there he placed man in where he formed him. Sometimes you have to know that what God is after is to prepare a place for the adventure that you were designed for. And you need to have the right stuff on to remind you that you're not apathetic, that you got to pull on the right hat for the adventure you're on because if all you do is wear your church best clothes for the adventure of a lifetime, then I'm on the beach and I'm on the beach with my hat on, Joe, and, and, and I'm not at church. I'm on an adventure. You, you, you pull on clothes to let people think you're somewhere that you're not instead of wearing clothes for the adventure that you should be on. And so it said in verse 15, the Lord God took man and placed him in the garden of Eden to do, uh, to do what Elder Joe do a good job at, to work. And I remember when that guy was working three jobs, man. I remember that guy was working like, I mean, and now I got Robert Woods, and he working three jobs, man. That guy working three jobs. I say, yo, man, what you working three jobs for? Because, mind you. That's the adventure. I don't know about that adventure. So, so let's look at three keys today 
to males quenching their life thirst for success, significant, and a sense of belonging. There's three keys I want to give you as we prepare. Now, this is water, but this is also, let's just call it spiritual water. And it's, it, we, we put it, it says thirst. So you're thirsty, and you have men in your life that is thirsty. I can promise you, ladies and gentlemen, and all of those who watch it, the world has sucked so much of water out of us, spiritual water out of us, that we have now come to the point that we have dry mouth, and we're way past dehydration. We are dehydrated. And my responsibility, if you, if you can hear it, is to give you substance from the Word of God that can quench that thirst so that you don't get sick. They say that there's more men in the hospital with dehydration right now because no one tells them that they're dehydrated. So by the time they get to a man, he's already dehydrated. He's already in the hospital. Because he's taking, from, he's taking water from places that needs it. Like the brain, 85% water, Joe. It's in, a, it's in a, a solution, a salty solution that it sits in. And it needs water. It needs the oxygen from the water to survive. So that's why we don't think clearly, because we don't have enough water in our minds to function the way we could. Now, now stay with me. Three, three things that I think is key number one. Here's the key. Now, and this is, this is hot. All right? So I need to switch up. All right? Now, this is my adventure. While I'm at the gym, put my hat backwards. This is my adventure. Now, I, you know, and when I don't have my hat... I don't feel like I can work out. You know, I, I, don't feel, I just don't feel that. You know, but I don't wear this to bed when I'm making love to my wife. Now, some of you put on your hat because you're trying to tell her, leave me alone. So you put on something to tell her you don't want her. And she put on... Flannels to tell you she don't want you. In the summer. Can you? I don't understand this. In the summer. Well, I got my flannels on. It's 90 degrees. So what you telling me? You don't want the adventure. So when you don't want the adventure, I need to find somebody who ain't got no flannels on. So I go downstairs, turn a tube on, and watch a flick with a girl who had no flannels on. And now she's, she's taking me on an adventure that don't belong to me. And now I'm getting dehydrated because she's pulling water out of me, substance out of me, spirit out of me, life out of me, and I don't even know when I have a dry mouth moment. And ladies, if you need flannels, then put your flannels on in the bathroom, take a picture of her, and take it off, and go back in the bedroom with your husband without flannels. Stay with me. We're talking about keys. Keys to get us from dry places as men that one day we end up with a dry mouth moment. And we end up sick. And we end up spiritually sick, physically sick, psychologically sick, mentally sick. And all it was was too many dry moments and no one told us we were in dry places. So here we are. You are not a mistake. Key number one, men, ladies, your men make mistakes. Stop telling them that they are a mistake. Men, you make mistakes, but you're not a mistake. You have to understand you're going to make mistakes. That, don't, that shouldn't take you to a dry place. The reason why you get dry with your mistakes is because you call yourself the mistake. But once you, ladies, identify your males in your life making mistakes, at that point, you have to affirm who they are and not keep calling them the mistake. 
And man, when you make mistakes, you can't keep calling yourself a mistake. You have to affirm yourself and say, but I made a mistake, but Joe looks at Michelle and say, honey, I made a mistake, but I'm marvelous. I'm the marvelous creation with unlimited a billion possibilities. So what you have in my house, Michelle, what you have in the house is a marvelous creation with unlimited a billion possibilities that makes your life better because you got a man. You you, you see Brother Alvin is 80 80, 80 plus years old, and and, and so he made 80 plus mistakes, 80 years of mistakes. So if he said, I'm a mistake, do you know what's going to, he's going to, fall down because he has more past mistakes than he have life left. So his mistakes will push him down and cause depression because he calls himself what he did and not who he is. So Brother Alvin, you are a marvelous creation. You have unlimited ability, unlimited possibility. And you are not a mistake. That keeps men out of dry places when they know what they're not. See, a creative God used his creativity to make and place that, 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 that same creativity inside of us as males. And you're not the result of a mistake, men, or some unexplainable big bang. It is God in it. It is Christ in us that's saying to us, if you're dry, it's because you keep thinking you are what you do, whether good, bad, or indifferent. You are not because you work. That's not who you are. You work somewhere, but you are not what you do. It's who you are that defines you. So, man, I want you to make this statement with me. Go back to the other slide. We need to make this statement. And men out there, you need to make this statement. Here we are. And ladies, help us out. Ready? Let's say it. You are not a, but a marvelous creation with what? Men, you haven't even tapped into all that you can be, but you can't be because you're still dry. And when you're in a dry place, you don't have enough mobility, mobility and freedom because you're sucking life out of every single organ in your life. When you're in a dry place, you don't need coffee. Coffee is simply a caffeine that you use to try to fix something that is broke. So you go get a person who's a caffeinated freak to fix you. And how many freaky people you be with to try to fix the reality that you're in a dry spot? And caffeine don't fix the problem. Christ does. Key number one, believe it or not, it's still a fact. Believe it or not, scientists wrote it. You're not sick, you're thirsty. Believe it or not, by the time you get to a dry mouth, you're already dehydrated. Your organs are already shut down. Believe it or not, by the time you get to a dry spiritual spot, you've already dehydrated. I'm so happy Joe, I'm back home. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. I I got one amen up front, and here we are. Genesis chapter 2, so we can make sure we understand why it's a fact. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 said, and the Lord God did what? The Lord God, right? So that that just validates what we just said, right? We need to validate. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a total fact is that you make mistakes, and I'm going to make mistakes, but I'm not a mistake. I'm a marvelous creation with unlimited potential and possibilities in me and in you. That's the statement we have to make to men today. That's the statement we have to make to young men on the street corners today. That's what we have to make with men who have identity crisis. That's 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 the statement we have to make. We have to tell them that, hey, hey, you make a mistake, but you're not a mistake. Key number two. There are places 
on this God-created earth for you to start and continue your adventure. Believe it or not, it's still the fact. You can't let Columbus box make you smaller because of a box that you keep putting yourself in. If the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of all, the world they're in and all that's in it belong to God, you need a larger venue for the adventure. If not, you get bored in the box and then you get more dry spots in your life because God gave you an earth. So right from the beginning, man in his original state was put in the place to start out on the adventure which would bring him much fulfillment while learning the importance of, here's the word, consistently returning to his creator for direction. You know why we get dry? Because we forget to return. So Josh, you're Jesus. And I'm a man. And I'm looking for the adventure. And I'm a son in the house with a mother. And I'm a single parent. And I got, and I'm, I'm a mom and I'm a single parent mom. And I got a son. Or I, or I, or, 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 or I have a grandson. And his parents are gone. And what do I teach him to prepare him for the adventure ahead of him? And so you teach him to consistently return back to his creator and ask him, what do you want from me? And before he tells you what he wants from you, he gives you what you need. So he takes your dry moments and fills you with what you need. And then he reminds you, see, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world they're in, and all that is in it is yours. And why are you so consumed with small thinking? You won't even go to the beach. You, you, you won't try nothing else. So your adventure becomes as small as your thinking. Instead of going back to the one who created you, who got all this imagination, he's like, Adam, look. What's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, that's a pomegranate. I've never seen one of those before. Well, oh, that, that, that's, that's bananas. What? I can't find bananas at Kroger's. They're too hot now. <laughs> and, and, and when you return back to your creator, thank you, sir, for direction, he's reminding you that you're dry and that's why you don't have direction. And you're trying to make direction with your life in a dry moment. And when you're trying to give your life direction when you're dry and you're in a drought, you're going to destroy your destiny. Because you don't even know right now that you're dry. And you're making decisions from a dry spice in life. So right from the beginning, it says, the Lord God planted a garden in the, east, in the east, and he placed a man he formed. Now, he placed a man in the garden. Why did he place him there? Because he wanted to place him somewhere to remind him that, man, life is bigger, man. And he said, hey, you know what? here's touch, here's taste, here's smell, here's sight. And he wants you, and, 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 and Trey, when, when, you, when you take your, your wife and, and you take her to an exotic place, to take her to an island and take her to Jamaica and take, and take her to Alvin's like, stopping ground and, and let her touch and taste and, and see. And she's like, wow. And she says, that's not Columbus. She says, amen, hallelujah, bless you, Jesus. <laughs> and, and could it be that we've limited our ability to touch, taste, smell, see the adventure because we locked ourselves into a job so long that all we know is the job. And we forget that a job is just a mean to an end, but it's not the end. And what about the adventure? What about, what about the adventure? What about, what about Joe? I went, to Nairobi, I went to Nairobi, Kenya. I took Matt. I took Daryl. I took Rice, man. I took some of you with me. I went there five times. And when I went to the adventure, man, like, wow, poor, man, some poor people. And I get a chance to bring some poor kids in my arms and, 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 and touch them and look at them like, 
Wow, I never saw so, so much poverty, so much pain, so much. And eventually made life the adventure. Mother Teresa left a job that was a teacher. And she said, I, I got to go to Calcutta, India. And, and the adventure of, of taking dead babies in her arms and taking them to a proper grave. And some of those babies would never have a, a graveyard experience. And she took dead babies, the adventure of life. And she became a Nobel Prize winner because of the adventure. Not because she was a teacher. Her profession gave her profit. Her adventure gave her influence. And there's places that you have to go and people you have to see. And they don't look like you, smell like you, act like you. And they only want to be you, but you're supposed to be there. So that you don't get bored and dry-mouthed and dehydrated. And then die. In this book, they tell you how many people die of dehydration a day. A day in America. And they say doctors would try to give you a pill to fix the pain instead of thinking and looking at the fact he's only dehydrated. And they can give you water to fix it. Instead of giving you water, they give you a pill. And you pop a pill instead of thinking about, I'm just dehydrated. Because you and I forget, I'm not the mistake. I made a mistake. Key number three. Key number one. Anybody remember key number one? Remember, my what's key number one? Anybody remember key number one? Key number one. Yeah, I'm not a mistake. Key number two, key number two, going twice, key number two. There's places and places and people that you are called to. And, and if, you're, if, if you're here and you are, or you're there, and you are from 15 to 21, if you're that person, can you slip your hands up 15 to 21 here? Okay, yeah, okay thank you right there. Good. Right, oh, thank you right there. Good, 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 good. Can I tell you? Thank you. I see your hand back there. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Start the adventure now. Because by the time you get our age, you don't think you need one. Because you normalize life to normal. And life wasn't never supposed to be normal. It was supposed to be an adventure for the rest of our life. Key number three. Man in his original state was put in a position of responsibility and stewardship, as well as having to learn how to maintain what was given to him. Believe it or not, it's a fact. Isn't it interesting in American culture, Joe, that we're one of the only cultures that, that have three layers before you become a man? Your baby, your child, your youth, your teen, your young adult, your young man. By the time we are 30, we're still young men. And in some churches, they don't even let you become a man till you're 50. You're in Sunday school, still doing child work. And how do you become a man when you don't give, give them responsibility? So could I tell you, stop making up the bid for your males. They're 50. They can make their own bid. When you take responsibility away from a male, you cripple them because now they don't have what they need for the adventure ahead of them. And the adventure that we have to go on, men, is always about being responsible for what God gave us, time, talent, and treasure, and then being the steward over time, treasure, and, uh, time, treasure, and talent, and then maintaining it. How do you maintain a marriage? without stewardship and responsibility. You want to maintain something, but you don't want to be responsible for it. You want to maintain good financial health, but you don't want to be responsible for how you spend it. You want to maintain good spiritual health, but you don't come to church until you need it. By the time you come to church, you're already dead. 
and you need to be revived. So you're looking for us to revive you. That's why we have revivals, because most Christians die. They become spiritually dead, so we call them revivals. We don't need a revival. We need a reality that we, we lost responsibility for what we should be holding on to. So God tells Adam, now I don't know what you want. Believe it or not, Maze, it's a fact that Genesis chapter 15, this is what he said. The Lord God took man. All right, come here, Rob, you the man. Lord God took man, placed him in my garden. Here's the garden. And he said, work it. I'm tired of working for the man. Well, you ain't working for the man. You're working for the adventure in you. Because every adventure needs work. So you home sleeping instead of working. The more you sleep, the more you pull out the liquid in you, the life in you that keeps the adventure alive. So you retire and you die. Do you understand why so many people die with retirement? Because they have nothing to do. They lose the adventure of life. That's why I don't believe in retirement. My, that's my conviction. That's not the word of God. It's my conviction. I live my conviction. You live yours. I don't believe it. I believe in refirement. I fire to another thing. I leave engineering. I become a pastor. I'm a pastor. Don't know what I'll do next. I may travel in the world and be a voice to hopeless humanity my next part of my life. But I'm not going to retire until it's time for me to go to heaven. Because that's called retirement. So, 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 Adam, work. So you work. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Thank you. Just make sure you give us 10%. And you don't even want to do that. Because when you try, you keep it to yourself. Because you, you, you don't think you have enough for you. Because you don't have enough water. So you keep it to yourself. Because you've been a poor steward over your dollars. So now you can't give it to the church and help society and help hurting people because you're dry. You're in a drought, and you're in a financial drought. So go to work, Adam. Now, Adam, when you're working, you got to watch over because you got, you got all of this, man. The, the whole garden is yours. Okay. Okay. You got to watch it. You, know, you got to watch for serpents. Yeah, you got to watch for serpents. You know why you got to watch for serpents? Because serpents look for dry people. Serpents can't see. Lay, lay, lay down on the ground. I know you're clean, man. You're clean. Bunch of dust. Don't worry, mind you. Don't see you in your suit. She, she stepped out. But it's on national TV. <laughs> she going to replay it. Why were you on that ground like that? <laughs> so, 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 you're, so you're dirt. You're down there. And remember, God didn't blow his breath of... If Monty was here, I would have her do it. Oh, were you? I didn't know you were there. Hi, come here. Come here. Yeah, just go stand by. Go stand by Adam. I got a few minutes. Hey, Adam, st sit right here because she can't bend down. She got a dress. I, 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 I don't want nobody to you know, say that. We got to, you know. All right, so, so, so you got to use your imagination. This is, he's, he's, on, he's dirt. He's laying down. He has no breath. The animals are walking around. You know, excuse me. The monkey look at it. The giraffe. The skunk. <laughs> and the serpent. And the serpent says, he's protected. God's watching over him. It's his creation. And then God says, hey, we need to give it life. So go kiss your husband. All right, blow some of that life in him. Mouth. 
Mouth. <laughs> woo Took off. She just took off all of those. No. Back, back to the message. So now, now, remember what the Bible said, right? Now he becomes a living. Now, so what, what, did, what, did he, what, what came alive? His senses. His sight. So now, I'm his creator. He start. God said, let me show you. See? And he said, what's that? Wow. Whoa, wow. Then God take him to something else. And he said, hey, that's fruit. Here, give it to him. He said, mmm. Mmm, mmm, taste, mmm. Then he, he started hearing the ocean, shh, the wind, shh, the cows. He hears everything. And his senses are alive. And white when his senses are alive, that's when the serpent says, I can get to him now. Because he will never know when he's dry. Because his senses will make him think that he's not dry. Because he'll fix it with the things he see and touch and taste. So even when he's dry, he'll go find something to fix it. And it won't fix it. All it does is make, give Satan more room to his life. Because now he's drinking more coffee. Because he, he, he needs to stay up. But the coffee is taking the fluid out of his body, and the enemy has said, I can kill him without him even knowing I'm doing it because he's doing it to himself. Yeah. Thank you. A few more minutes, and I'll wrap this up. Anybody learn something today? On the, Joe said, I'm back. I'm, I, I feel good. I, I, I would... I, I went out to breakfast with Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone, come on down here. I went out to breakfast with Dr. Stone. We ate, man. We ate so much yesterday at first watch. And, and it's good when you eat when somebody pay for it. I mean, that's a good feeling, Joe. I, and when I, I saw his plate, I just kept ordering. <laughs> you know, he had, he, had, he, had a, he had a big pancake, and I said, can I have a waffle? And yeah, he just kept, I just kept ordering. I said, I, I, I want a, a, a morning meditation. I want coffee. Yeah, I, I, I wanted an omelet, I wanted, and then I saw you had a blueberry pancake and an omelet and a coffee and a morning meditation meditation. I just kept building up. I said, well, he prayed for it. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 and so we were in the garden yesterday at first watch, and our, our, senses, were, and our senses were alive, and we started drinking coffee. And I started going to the bathroom, and you did too. And we were, we were losing more water than we were drinking water, and neither one of us had a really, we, we, we had a glass of water, we never drank it. Because you have the Bible, but you never read it. But you have everything you need, but you never use it. But you have pastors and elders, you never call them. But by the time you call your pastor, elders, and deacon, you're already dehydrated. Now you need a miracle instead of a movement. Because all you need is to move when you run to the right people. But now you need a miracle because you come to us when you are at a dehydrated time. And we had, I mean, I remember because I said I'm going to use this because I said, I remember we had, you, you said, give us a craft of water. And we drank coffee and we would drink, and I drank two cups of coffee. And we ate a lot of food and we, we had caffeine. And I saw the water sitting here, and we never picked it up. And how many of you never picked your Bible up? It's right in your house. How many of you wait to come to church to pick up a Bible? How many of you don't pick up worship when God tells you to worship because it wets you and keeps you moist? How many of you stop praying because you're in a dry place and you stop praying? How many of you today, as men, as people, God is saying to us, you're in a dry place. You have a dry mouth. And that's why you talk the way you talk, because you're dry. And you know what dry people do? Hurt people. Thank you, sir. Give me a few more minutes. I'm going to wrap this up.
If you're learning something, you give me a few more minutes. Gotta get, yeah. Hey, Brother Alvin from Cleveland. Hi, Cleveland in the house. Brother Alvin. Oh, that, 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 that's a puppy. That's a dog. Hey, Brother Alvin, can you walk down here for me? Yo! Yeah. And, and you 80 what? 81, yo! What's up, man? I miss you, man. I love you. Yeah. And so, when I thought about you, I thought about you on the beach. You know, I know the story. I know your whole story. Because you sit on my porch <laughs> during COVID. You didn't, let me, never, you, didn't, you didn't let me go to sleep. You just knock on the door. You just come over there and tell you. My wife said, it's Alvin. You better get up. <laughs> so, so I got up. And she gave us something to eat. We sit out there in the cold. We're like, what's the word to God? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be late at night, man. He'd be still in the house, man. It'd be like 12 o'clock. So I got to be at church tomorrow. <laughs> He'd be like, prophesy to me. I don't say the Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> but you still got to work it, my friend. Even when it don't feel like it works, you still got to work faith. Even though it don't feel like it works. Because your feeling says it don't work, but your fact is that faith does work. And when you don't feel it, the fact still stands that God's watching over you and that you are marvelous and you are unbelievable and you're not a mistake. And doctors made mistakes because they just didn't know what they were touching. They didn't know who you were. So you know what God did? Gave you everything you need inside. And my responsibility today was to tell you, dry moments don't design, not designed to determine who you are. They're designed to remind you who you are. Stretch your hands towards him. Father, I thank you for this creation of Mar this marvelous creation. I thank you for every cell in his body, every ligament, every tendon, every single part of his respiratory system, every part that needs touch. I touch this creation of yours. And as you blew life into the first man, now, Holy Spirit, blow life into this man. Blow, Holy Spirit. Blow healing in this body. Blow hope into this body. And blow into this body a remembrance of who you are. Great man of God. Yeah, that's who you are, my friend. Yeah. So he take my book. That's just the way it is. What produced this moment was a man is sin. Yeah. That's all. It was sin. Right from the beginning. The enemy knows. Next slide, please. The enemy knew that sin. It would produce a fall in man. And it would take us from our original position and the potential in our godly adventure to just living and then dying. And that's what the enemy wanted us to do, just to wake up one day and just live, to die. Didn't want us on an adventure. Didn't want us to 
to consistently find God and find direction. Because he knew if we do that, we would defeat him. Because he didn't want an adventure. All he wanted was a defeat. He just wanted to defeat God. And the only way he can defeat God is to defeat us. So, so, so then, how do we, like Adam, find our godly adventure on earth again? How do we get out those dry places? Number one, and number one is the most important fact I can give you today, is we have to believe in the Jesus of the Scripture, not the Jesus of opinions, not the Jesus of cults, not the Jesus of the past, not the Jesus of people who wanted us to know the Jesus they knew, but the, the Jesus of the Scripture. There are so many views about Jesus, but you, you, if you don't have Jesus of the Scripture, you're, you're, you're going to live in confusion and live in complacency and as so many males live in every single day of our life. And, and you go to the next slide, the Jesus of the Scripture. And we have to find the Jesus of the Scripture again because without the Jesus of the Scripture, we have, we have nothing to look at. You know, the Jesus of the Scripture, you look at Jesus of the Scripture, you see somebody walk on the water. You know, you watch Michael Jackson moonwalk, but Jesus walked on water. And what an adventure. You, you watch Jesus, he, 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 you see him at a wedding, and you see him got some water, and he start looking at water and start turning water into wine. Whoa, whoa look at that adventure, the Jesus of Scripture. You see him at a well with a woman that Elder Joe talked about. Jesus of Scripture got some blind eyes, and he said, give me some dirt. Where's some dirt at? Where's some dirt? 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 Took some dirt and said, poof, and eyes, poof, and whoa, whoa. Jesus of the scripture, loaves of bread and a couple fish start to break it. And wow. But you know, when we don't find Jesus in the scripture, we find men making mistakes and becoming the mistakes. And then we get dry again. But you know what keeps us from being dry? Finding Jesus of the scriptures that keeps life vibrant and alive. Jesus of the scripture. John 7, 37, he said, on the last day, most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone is thirsty, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me. Why come to me? Because I'm the adventure. I'm the adventure. I'm the true adventure. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I'm Jesus. Look at me. I cast out demons. Look at me. I raised up the dead. Look at me. I drink. I turn water into wine. Look at me. Why keep looking at a dry world? Why try to find an adventure in the world that doesn't have one, that's dying? Why be as dry as the world that you live in? Look at me. Come to me. The one who believes in me as the scriptures have said will have streams of living water flowing from them. So, so we have to believe again. Look at the screen and look at the next text. Believe that there is surplus of living water and ability and potential and possibilities inside of you men. Believe again that there's something in you. Greater is he that sent you to him in the world. Believe that there's so much stuff in me that hasn't been seen yet. Believe in me, there's so much I've got to do that I haven't done yet. It's not time for me to die yet. It's not time for me to be a young boy, young man at a party and someone shoots with recklessly shoot. It's not time for me to be in the wrong place at the wrong time because that's not my adventure. It's not time for me to leave the planet yet when there's so much more in me. And I go where I'm destined to go and not just to be in another dry party. 
another drive-by. Because I'm in a dry place and I make dry decisions. The one who believes in me, as the scripture said, will have streams of living water flowing deep within him. For the online group, thank you so much for being with us today. And if you want the totality of, of, of this message, you can go and I'll get that information to you, but I got to let you go. I understand. You're home, and this is all about one thing. If you're in a dry place, don't stay dry. Get help. Find Christ. Trust Christ. Live for Christ. And then find other people who are not dry. Because wise people hang with wise people, and dry people hang with dry people, and people who are not dry hang with undry people. See you next week at International Christian Center. Thank you again for joining us. If this is your first time with us, make sure you check out Members Connect. And don't forget, there are multiple ways to give, and here they are. And don't forget to stay connected with us on social media. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next week.